prepares to cover some unusual subjects in their 1100 scale range. This kit is the Daimler Scout Car Mark I or Daimler Dingo. Adopted in 1940, the Dingo was a speedy four-wheel drive light armoured car used for scouting and reconnaissance. Total production ran to more than 6,500 vehicles. This is a tiny vehicle and this kit has only 10 parts. The exploded diagram on the back is the only instructions, but it's more than sufficient to get this kit built. The construction follows Vesta's usual pattern. Given this is engineered as a snap-together kit, there are several separate parts used to get the hull and chassis together. Parts are well connected with pins and sockets, but gluing them is recommended, particularly for the wheels. Looking inside the box, there's an Art of Tactic card for this vehicle. There's also an information sheet advertising the Art of Tactic game. The kit parts come on a single sprue of beige plastic. There is plenty of room here given the limited number of parts, so it'll be easy to access the parts and snip them off the sprue. Some of the parts, like the machine gun muzzle moulded onto the hull front, are very delicate and care needs to be taken. The kit is moulded with the top hatch and upper hull as a single piece, meaning it can only be built in the closed down configuration. In operation, many crews open the large top hatch to get a good view in the recce roll. Given how it's moulded, it would be difficult to modify this kit to have open hatches. Let's get started on the build. I'm starting with the lower and upper hull pieces. Some sprue attachment points on both hull pieces are poorly placed on edges and surfaces, that will be clearly visible on the completed kit. Snip these carefully and sand down to remove all traces of these. Be careful to avoid snapping off the very delicate gun barrel here. Join these two pieces using the pins and sockets. Once they're together, the characteristic angled shape of the armoured plates on the hull is clear. Next step is the fenders. Clip this part from the sprue and clean up. Again, there are sprue attachment points on fender edges that will be clearly visible in the finished kit, so again, careful trimming and sanding is required. Clip out the chassis piece. This part has some delicate suspension parts, and again, care must be taken not to bend or snap these off. Posts and sockets make connecting these two parts simple and a drop of glue will hold them firmly in place. The hull section then drops in and posts ensure good alignment here. This is a major part of the build completed. This is certainly a quick build. The last hull piece is a toolbox mounted across the front of the vehicle. There's a couple of small ejector pin marks on the underside of this piece, so make sure you trim these down to ensure it makes a seamless fit. There we go. The wheels come next. The tyres have good tread detail, but there are a couple of attachment points and a mould line along the seam. A quick sand will sort this out, and try placing the attachment points on the ground when attaching the wheels. These simply push onto posts on the chassis piece. If you don't use glue anywhere else on this kit, I suggest you use some here. The wheels make a good positive fit, but the glue will help them stay on during table use. So that's the completed build. It only took a few minutes, even with me stopping to film each step. This is truly a tiny vehicle, particularly in 1100 scale, but British troops benefit from the eyes and ears these little reconnaissance vehicles provide. Here are the Flames of War stats for the Dingo. The British Army made extensive use of wheeled armoured cars for reconnaissance. This included some very heavy and well-armed vehicles like the AEC Staghound and Boarhound armoured cars, through to much lighter vehicles like the Dingo. Normally armed with only a light machine gun, the Dingo was a two-man vehicle powered by a six-cylinder petrol engine. Despite its small size, it was quite well protected against small arms fire with 30mm of armour in front. Although it's normally mounted in the front hull, the standard armament of a Bren light machine gun is listed as an AA machine gun, meaning in a pinch it can be used to fend off enemy aircraft. Some lists also give the option to add a 50 cal AA machine gun to the vehicle for greater punch. Early war dingoes can optionally mount a boy's anti-tank rifle. But the primary role of the dingo is reconnaissance, and dingo platoons are reconnaissance platoons, meaning they gain all the recce rules benefits. In Flames of War version 3 this includes rules like cautious movement and disengage, 
as well as being able to make reconnaissance deployment moves. However, recce rules are slated for big changes in version 4, so I won't go into any details here. Reconnaissance platoon special rules are covered in page 193 to 195 in the version 3 rulebook. So that's the Daimler Dingo from Zvezda, a very small and simple kit that builds up well. Probably my only real criticism is the prominent placement of some of the sprue joints on visible surfaces. Careful trimming and sanding can overcome this, but a bit more thought during the design process could have avoided the issue altogether. The very delicate MG on the front hull needs careful handling, and it would have been nice to be able to open the top hatches. But none of these are deal breakers, and this kit is a quick and easy way to add some eyes and ears to your British and Commonwealth forces.